یبن زهرا امان زین جدایی الاجل یبن تاها کجایی اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطاهرين Respected elders, scholars, brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Tonight we begin with a new surah Surah Al-A'raf which is chapter 7 it is a surah revealed in Mecca. It has more than 200 uh, verses. The scholars have divided it into paragraphs. There are more than 20 paragraphs in this, 24 to be exact. And the riwayah says that whosoever recites this surah once every month on the Day of Judgment, he shall have no grief and no sorrow and if you recite it once every week then more frequently that means on the day of judgment there will be no hisab also so one of the main themes covered in the surah is about the akhirah and that's why a recitation of this surah frequently and once a month or once a week protects the person from sorrow and grief paragraph number one is ayah 1 to 10. Marhum Sayyid Mir Ahmed Ali has given a title to this paragraph. It says, The Aim of uh, Wahi. And then he explains that every soul shall be judged, and every messenger shall be questioned, and all deeds will be measured justly and with fairness. So the surah begins with certain letters known as the huruf, huruf muqatta'at. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alif Lam Mim Saad. Four letters are mentioned here. Different surahs begin with different numbers of letters. Some begin with single letters, Noon or Qaf or Saad. Some begin with triple letters alif lam mean some begin with longer letters the big question is what do these so what do what do these letters represent there are different interpretations between scholars some say that this is some sort of a secret communication between the prophet and god and therefore we cannot know the meaning some riwayat say no uh, all of these letters represent uh, an abbreviation of the name of God. So, for example, Alif Lam Mim Saad represents the three names of God in that He is the Hadi, uh, He is the Allah, He is the um, the Sadiq and he is the Rahim. So each letter from the name of God is picked up and then associated with him. This is one possible interpretation. A secret communication or no, an abbreviation. Or no, a third interpretation is that most, if not all, in fact all of them in some way, all of the surahs in which these letters appear, the main theme covered in that surah is about wahi, is about revelation from God. So after the first few letters, the next ayah will say, this is a book from God the Creator, God the Almighty, God the All-Merciful. It's as if to say therefore that this book is not an ordinary book. The book is made up of ordinary letters, yes, but if you think that 
this is from the Prophet's own making and fabrication, then these are the letters. Take them. Alif and Lam and Meem and Saad and Ra and Kaf and Ha and Ain and Saad. You take these letters and you also combine them to make words and words into phrases and sentences and verses and surahs. And you also produce something like this if you can. So this could be a challenge. Alif, Lam, Meem, Saad. Ayah number two says, Kitabun unzila ilayka fala yakun fi sadrika haraj minhu litunzira bihi wa dhikra lil mu'mineen. This is a book, not an ordinary book. It's an extraordinary book, a great book which has been sent down from above. It's not your own book. It's revealed to you. So, so that through this book you may warn mankind, all of them, and so that it may become an effective, active admonition and reminder to the believers only. The warning is for everyone, but not everyone will take heed. It's only the believers who respond to it and who benefit from it. فَلَا يَكُنْ فِي صَدْرِكَ حَرَجْ مِنْهُ You're trying your best to deliver the message, to debate with them, to discuss with them, to demonstrate the proofs to them. But they refuse to accept the truth. Let there be no <coughs> burden in your heart because of their rejection. Your duty is to deliver. Your duty is to deliver. Don't be burdened and grieved and sad because they're rejecting. And, and don't be burdened also in case those who do believe, they don't act on it fully. Some of them fail. Some of them are sinners. Allah will give you the power to be able to, to do shafa'a on their behalf also on the Day of Judgment. Asa an yab'athaka rabbuka maqaman. Mahmuda. The warning is for everyone, but the benefit will be by the believers only. It's just like the, the sun gives energy to everyone, but there are those who cannot receive and use that energy, and there are those who have the capacity to be able to receive it and convert it into useful applicable energy. The mu'mineen receive the light of guidance from the son of the Qur'an. The kafir cannot benefit, but the mu'min converts it into useful energy to bring about a change in his spiritual life. Ayah number three. Ittabi'u ma unzila ilaykum min rabbikum wa la tattabi'u min min dunihi awliya you must follow this Quran which has been revealed. You must follow. You. Who is you? The ayah hasn't addressed anyone specifically in the ayah itself or in the ayah before it. And therefore, the address is universal. The previous ayah said this book is a warning, warning to all. And therefore now the instruction is to everyone. Follow this instruction, this guidance. Kwanini Kusababu Ma unzila ilaykum mir rabbikum. Your Rabb has sent it down to you. Your Rabb who is your cherisher, your nourisher, your provider, your protector, your guardian. He cares for you. He loves you. He knows you more than you do yourself. He knows what your problems are. He knows what's the solution to your problem. How come when you become sick, you go to a doctor? And whatever the doctor tells you, you accept. Kwanini. Well, because you trust him. He's an expert. He's experienced. He's got competence. He's proven his track record of being a successful healer. Well, good enough. You have spiritual problems, social problems, political problems, financial problems. This man, the Prophet, is claiming that he has a message from God. In order to prove his claim, he's produced a miracle. You don't have an answer to the miracle. So follow the advice of the All-Wise One. 
just like you would in all affairs of your life, whenever you're stuck, you go to the one who's the expert to find guidance. But you have an option, we are not going to force you. You may decide not to follow, but then be careful. But don't turn to anyone other than him, God, awliya. They could be your friends, they could be your uh, protectors, your guardians, your supporters. Anyone other than God who gives you instructions which conflict with what God says, don't follow them. Qanini. Sababu, they become your wali. Once they become your wali, they have authority over you. You come under their wilaya. Few of you take admonition and take heed of this message. Or few of you become believers. Or few of you believers do fully comply with the instruction and guidance given by God. Item number four. Lakini, beware, inasmuch as you refuse to comply with the instructions from the expert, let's say the doctor, you will suffer. Well, let me tell you, if you don't follow this message, you'll suffer the same way as people before you suffered. وَكَمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا Oh, how many, how many? How should we list down? What names should we give you? You, you do travel, you go in your trade, uh, trips you go to the north in your trade trips trips you go to the south on the way you see ruins ruins of past communities who were doomed to destruction because they disobeyed how many settlements and townships and cities we have destroyed in the past our wrath and might and punishment came to visit them Bayatan Aw Hum Ka Ilun Sawa so when the punishment comes we will ask for forgiveness. No, it comes Bayatan suddenly unexpectedly while you sleep at night. You went to sleep very happy. You didn't even wake up. Aw no, sometimes it doesn't come in sleep, it comes during the daytime. Aw hum ka ilun. When you're taking your daytime siesta, Qaylula is the midday nap. The Spanish, uh, siesta is from a Spanish word, sexta is six. The sixth hour after sunrise, that's the noon time, the early noon nap in Spanish and therefore borrowed by English is known as the siesta. When you are in your siesta, Allah comes and takes you away. So follow this guidance because it's from the all-loving, all-merciful, all-knowing, all-kind Lord. It's good for you. You don't, beware, the doctor tells you, if you don't follow these instructions, you're going to suffer. The creator of the universe says, you don't follow this instruction, you'll be doomed the same way those before you were doomed. And suddenly they were seized. Or incidentally, don't think when the punishment begins to appear, it's going to come, and before it strikes you, you will have the chance to change and to ask for pardon and forgiveness. It's too late. فَمَا كَانَ دَعْوَاهُمْ إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأَسُنَا إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا إِنَّا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ At that time, they will confess when the signs of punishment appear, and it becomes inevitable, inescapable. At that time, they'll regret They'll confess, they will realize, yes, we knew what he was saying was true. We knew we should have listened to him. We knew we should have obeyed him. We didn't. We followed the dunya, the pleasures, the devil. We knew we were doing wrong. We made excuses, we justified. Oh, what should we do? It was our parents. What should we do? It was the society. Or oh, what should we do? It was the leaders. It was the media. It was the propaganda. It was friends. Excuses. You knew what the truth was. So now you'll regret. So now you'll want to repent. So now you'll confess. Sorry, it's too late. Everyone has a chance to make tawbah when they have the free choice. When the punishment becomes impending, unavoidable, the time is up. No regret now and no repentance now will be accepted. 
So you will confess that you did dhulm, dhulm to yourself, you hurt yourself, dhulm to your family and your friends, dhulm to God by rejecting his laws, dhulm to the world of nature by despoiling it and by violating God's laws that are good for the balance and the harmony of nature. You hurt others by abusing them physically or verbally or emotionally. You'll confess your dhulm at that time. It will be too late. Alhamdulillah. So the disbelievers and the deniers and the rejecters will be punished because God is recording and God is therefore going to take them to account. Oh, so the account is for the disbelievers. No, no, it's not only for the disbelievers, sorry, it's for everyone. That's what ayah number six says. فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ We will surely, without fail, question everyone. Those to whom the prophets were sent, the ummah, did they receive the message? Did they understand the message? Why didn't they follow? Was it unclear? Why didn't they go and ask for clarification? What excuse did they have for not following the law of God? Everyone will be questioned. Not only the ummah, but also the apostles who were sent to guide the ummah, they will be questioned. Did you carry out your duty carefully and fully, the task that was entrusted to you? The fundamental requirement of any duty, any task which is entrusted to someone, accountability. You must be able to answer. God is going to question you. If nobody questions you here, if you don't question yourself in preparation before that final encounter with the Lord, the Lord inevitably, inexorably, He will question and nobody can escape. Even the prophets cannot escape the questioning from God. And the question, of course, is not only about whether they carried out their duty, whether they received their message. Even the believers will be questioned. In Surah Takathur, Allah says, ثُمَّ لَيُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Every ni'mah that has been given to everyone shall be questioned. إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Not only the external bounties, even the internal faculties, my eyes, my ears, my heart, my mind, my thought processes, everything that has been given to me shall be put to question. Did you acknowledge? Did you use for the purpose for which it was given? It wasn't yours. It was temporarily given. You doubt? Look at the old people, they begin to lose their memory. <laughs> it was never their own to keep it. It was temporarily given. Yes, an old person who loses his mental capacity and cannot now remember and cannot now think and cannot therefore perform basic tasks. Allah therefore has removed the control from him and therefore he will not be questioned for not now obeying God because he can't even understand. Even if you make him stand up, he won't be able to pray. He won't be able to remember the surah and the fatiha and the dhikr. Sawa. ma ghalab Allahu alayhi wa awla bil uzr. This is maghloob. Allah is ghalib. Allah has overwhelmed him. Circumstances are such that he can't perform his duties. He will not be taken to task. But the point is, it was never his to start with. The capacities that were given to him, the faculties. And therefore, every faculty will be questioned. How was it received and used? So therefore, on the Day of Judgment, if there is going to be a question, who is going to give the answer? Surah Yaseen. The tongues cannot speak. The tongues lie. They pretend, they show off. The truth will speak, whatever their limbs, limbs have done, their hands and their feet. No, above that, not only will the testimony come from the limbs, not only will the testimony come from the earth in, on which the sin was committed, or from other witnesses, the angels, or the prophet of the time, or the imam and the hujja of the time, 
the, God himself will also report and narrate ayah number 7 falanaqussanna alayhim bi'ilmin wa ma kunna ghaibin we ourselves shall narrate to them exactly what they have done ayah number 7 will relate to them and recount to them and narrate for them and inform them in a way that they can never doubt or reject kwanini bi'ilmin because we will be presenting with absolute proof that they cannot reject how can you do so wa ma kunna ghaibin we were never absent that was his problem he thought in the dunya the sinner that nobody is there to watch me and therefore nobody is there to record therefore there was nobody to reward oh ma kunna ghaibin we were never ghaib we were present don't you know god is khabir and basir and sami' and muhit and alim and allam al ghuyub and la ya'zubu an ilmihi mithqalu dharra not a single atom smallest amount of any act or any thought escapes his unlimited knowledge it is always always the the negligence the heedlessness the forgetting of the reality of god's absolute presence that makes us sinful otherwise we don't commit sin in public because we know we're being watched well, if you, we knew we were being watched even in private we would not dare to commit sin if we had true faith in God. I number eight. So the book has been sent as a guide. Believers will heed. Disbelievers will reject. Everyone therefore will be taken to account. Some accounting will take place in the dunya. Some are going to be punished in the dunya. Or some all will be definitely taken to be taken to account in the akhirah, including the messengers and the people to whom the messengers were sent. Kwanini, well, because the recording system is taking place all the time. Okay, so everything has been recorded. But then, uh, will the prosecution of justice be meted out to everyone or not? So the next ayah says, وَالْوَزْنُ يَوْمَئِذِنِ الْحَقَّ The scale on which the measurement shall be done of everyone's deeds is truth and justice everything has to be measured in its own way we have a weighing scale for measuring objects that have weight so you put a standard weight on one side of the scale and the other pan you put the object that you want to measure you want to measure your pressure blood pressure you don't put him on a weighing scale there is a special sphygmomanometer, a blood pressure measuring machine. You want to measure blood sugar, you don't check his urine. There's a specific measurement, a particular marker, a particular chemical reaction that will show the amount of sugar in the blood. For every object, for every parameter, for every item, there's a specific weighing measuring instrument. We shall have a measuring scale to measure their deeds whether they were truthful or sinful well there has to be a scale appropriate for that the riwaya says that scale is the imam of the time is the prophet is the ma'asum Allah always sends the hujjah there's no time but there is a hujjah there are enough hujjah and proofs who have been sent in the past for all different situations and every time a decision has to be made what's right and wrong that particular model will be presented did you conform or did you fail to comply with that particular model and therefore the one whose pan on the scale will be heavier on the side of the truth and justice and then on sinfulness and disobedience it will be light 
that person is going to be successful. Yes, there will be some sins, but he can be forgiven either by shafa'a or he can be forgiven by punishment in the grave or punishment in Jahannam temporarily. In contrast, وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ As for those whose scale of deeds will be light, that means on the scale of truth and justice and righteousness and piety and obedience to God and fear of God, their scale becomes lighter, their deeds were lesser in truth, more heavy in sinfulness, disobedience, rejection, heedlessness, deliberate, defiant disobedience. That will be the heavier side. Such people, khasiru, khasiru, they'll be losers. They've lost. They've lost the chance. They were given a chance in the dunya, they've lost. Oh Allah, give them a second chance. Let them go back, perhaps they'll improve. No, enough chances are given to everyone. Death only visits a person after chance again and again and again has been provided to an individual. In uh, different surahs in the Quran, Allah says that when the punishment approaches them, they will say, Oh Allah, give us a second chance, let's go back to the dunya. When death has arrived already and they're in the barzakh, they say, Oh Allah, don't let us die, let us go back to the dunya. When they enter into Jahannam, so huge, the captain, the best of the technology could not save them. Well, it's not only the sea, the sea is an example. You could be flying. You could have suddenly a uh, drop in pressure. The pilot loses control. He can't do anything for you. Suddenly all those people listening to music and forgetting that the tasbih is out now. It's a matter of a few moments and you can fall out of the sky. Anything can happen anywhere. In all those situations, secretly, privately, in whispers, they talk. Oh, higher power, whoever you are, you're there, I know. Save me. If you save me, I'll become a good person. I promise you. I'm telling you, I will. Hey, I made a, I made a mistake. I, everybody makes a mistake. I'm sorry. I'll be a good person. Again and again and again, the Quran says, when we save them, they're back to their old ways. So Allah says here, they are losers, those whose scale of deeds become lighter in truth and justice. What have they lost? They've lost a chance? No. The Quran says, Hasiru anfusahum. They have lost the very capital that we gave them. You see, you make a business, you invest capital, you fail to make profit, Sawa, you've made a loss. But let's say your capital is still there. You can reinvest. But what if your capital is wiped out? What are you going to do now? And there's nobody else now to help you. These people have lost the very capital, the mind, the eyes, the ears, the soul, which was given as pure, innocent, truth-seeking capital to them. It was given pure. They tarnished it. They adulterated it. They defiantly and deliberately and knowingly, knowingly, even if they didn't receive the message from the messenger. Aql was there. The conscience was there. They defied it. They damaged their capital. They damaged it beyond repair. They're irreparably damaged and therefore hasiru anfusahum. How so? Bima kanu bi ayatina yadhlimun. Because they kept on doing wrong and sins against our communications. وَلَقَدْ مَكَّنَّاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضُ And we have given you power on the earth. وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشَ And we have provided you means of provision on the earth. The sun and the moon and the sea and the plants and the animals. All of them have been created so that human life becomes possible on the earth. We provided everything to enable and to facilitate human life. But the problem of man is he fails to recognize that these are special gifts given to him by God. The latest, latest report, the Royal Society in England in the early weeks of March had a lecture given by an astro 
biophysicists. These are specialists who look for life out there in the universe. Despite all efforts to search for life, till, till date, yes, they claim they've identified certain stars with Earth-like planets, Earth-sized planets, but there's no sign of life. If there is life, you have to see the signs of life. Life on the Earth is indicated by the fact that we have a blue ocean. Life is necessary. Uh, water is necessary for life. They haven't yet been able to discover water. Two, the fundamental signal of life on the Earth, oxygen. They haven't yet detected these chemical traces of oxygen from any other planet. Number three, if life is there, if at all it is intelligent, then it should be able to communicate. If it's able to communicate, it may have technology to send out some sort of communication or signals. No signals detected of intelligence. No signals detected of oxygen. No signals detected even of water. There is no sign of life out there as yet. Which means in this vast, enormous, unimaginably immense universe, we are the, the only one who are alive with this type of life. So well, maybe there's some other life. Maybe they're looking for the wrong. They're looking for blood sugar using the blood pressure machine. So well, maybe they don't have the right detectors. Maybe there's a different type of life. But the type of life we have, which is, which is intelligent, technologically advanced, able to communicate, send out signals, no, they haven't discovered anything like that. Allah says, we are the ones. وَلَقَدْ مَكَّنَّاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ We are the ones who facilitated life on the earth. And then we provided everything necessary for your provisions. قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ The one fundamental cause, cause of deviation, lack of thanks. Lack of thanks based on the fact that we don't recognize the blessings we have. And the lack of recognition that these blessings are not possible by chance. There has to be a designer, a creator, a provider, a protector who gives. That's the fundamental step anyone has to take to enter faith and to keep on in the faith. The sense of gratitude. Let's pray to Allah for you. The ability to make shukr all the time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.